So today we're visiting the Chalmette National Cemetery, which borders the Chalmette National Battlefield where the Battle of New Orleans takes place. The Chalmette National Cemetery was established in 1864 and it's one of 14 national cemeteries managed by the National Park Service. And in fact, it's actually one of the oldest. Now this cemetery contains veterans from the War of 1812 all the way up until the Vietnam War. And almost 7,000 of these graves behind me are marked unknown and a vast majority of those are from the American Civil War. Um, they have a few interesting stories here, so we're going to go ahead and find those graves and uh, share those stories. And they also have a few veterans from the War of 1812 here, and we're going to hopefully find those. So before we start exploring some of these stories I want to share with you, uh, the Union would capture New Orleans, which is in that general direction, in May of 1862. And this site here would be uh, a, a refugee camp from freed slaves and later become a burial ground for uh, former slaves, black hospital patients, and Union and Confederate troops. Something that's pretty interesting, um, there's a lot of them actually. These are some of the graves of the United States color troops from the American Civil War. You can see these headstones. These are just a portion of the almost 7,000 unknown soldiers that are buried here. Now, I believe there's just around 15,000 soldiers buried here, so unknown soldiers make up almost half of these servicemen buried here. As you can see, there's a few more over here and back this way. Just one of the uh, horrid aspects of war, especially during the 18th and 19th centuries when dog tags and other forms of identification weren't really a thing. So this grave's popping out to me for obvious reasons. And this is the grave of Jeremiah J. Foley, who was a native of Ireland, and he died on February 26, 1910. And he served in the U.S. Army during the American Civil War for almost two years as a first lieutenant in the 1st Regiment of the New Orleans Infantry Volunteers. Wow. So, here is one of the graves I wanted to show you. This is the final resting spot of William Henry Morgan, who was a general in the U.S. Army during the American Civil War. He was born on January 20th, 1825, as an English immigrant, lawyer, and educator, and then he volunteered for service in the Union Army and enrolled as a second lieutenant in the 2nd Wisconsin Cavalry during the American Civil War. So General Morgan here, he would serve under General Codwallader C. Washburn throughout the war, and he received an honorary brevet to Brigadier General in 1865. And that uh, he'd serve all the way through the war, and he would finally die on September 3rd, 1878. And again, here's more of the graves of unknown U.S. soldiers. You can just see row after row of uh, unknown soldiers. Oh geez, looks like uh, this tree here is kind of forming around some of the graves. Wow. And I did stumble across this one as well. General Scott of the United States Colored Troops. I'm going to have to look up his story because I wasn't aware that there was a, a general buried in this section amongst his men. So I'm in section 135 of the cemetery and here is one of the graves from a veteran of the War of 1812. This is Stephen R. Proctor, who was in the 2nd Regiment Light Infantry Dragoons, War of 1812. So I've never visited a uh, military cemetery before. And uh, let me tell you, there's nothing more humbling than seeing the final resting places of so many soldiers who have given everything uh, generations before me. Definitely a really humbling experience. So now we're here, this is section 55 of the cemetery, and this is significant because of this marker. This is John E. Jones. Now John E. Jones was born in 1834, and uh, his death is honestly unknown. But he's significant because he was a sailor in the Union Navy during the American Civil War, 
and he served as quartermaster aboard the USS Oneida. Now, during the Battle of Mobile Bay on August 5th, 1864, he was stationed at the ship's wheel, so he was controlling the ship when uh, the ship would become rendered useless when it received damage from Confederate fire. Well, while wounded, Jones helped send and receive signals before installing new ropes to uh, help control the rudder and the wheel, and for this action, he was awarded the Medal of Honor on December 31st, 1864. And there's no doubt that his actions not only saved the ship, but countless crewmen. So this is the site of John E. Jones, sailor in the Union Navy and Medal of Honor recipient. So something that's a little off topic, but uh, kind of ties into our last video that we did, is Chalmette National Battlefield is just over there on the other side of that wall. That's where the Battle of New Orleans took place. But the uh, reason why I'm pointing this out is the British had a artillery battery um, in the center of this graveyard. Obviously this graveyard wasn't here, but uh, the British had an artillery battery in this general section. So obviously I would love to share stories of all these brave men and women, but uh, one last marker I want to share with you is definitely has the most unique story and uh, we're about to find out why. Now this is the gravesite of Lyons Wakeman. Now Lyons Wakeman wasn't this soldier's name. This soldier's name was actually Sarah Rosetta Wakeman. And she was born on January 16th, 1843, and she would die on June 19th, 1864. And Sarah was a woman who served in the Union Army during the American Civil War, and her fake name was the male name of Lyons Wakeman. Now, Sarah would serve in Company H of the 153rd New York Volunteer Infantry, and she saw battle in the 153rd, uh, when they were transferred to the active battlefield in February of 1864. Her unit would participate uh, under the command of General Nathan P. Banks in the uh, ill-fated Red River Campaign, which uh, was a campaign to, I believe, take uh, parts of uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, don't quote me on that, but I, I believe the campaign took place in that general area. She would survive her combat engagement on April 9, 1864. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Sarah here, she contracted chronic diarrhea and she eventually died on June 19th of 1864 in the Marine USA General Hospital in New Orleans. Definitely a uh, very unique story. I read on my visit to the American Civil War Museum in Richmond that uh, countless women disguised themselves as men to join the ranks of the Union Army, but to see one of the uh, final resting places of uh, Sarah here is uh, remarkable. This is a very brave woman. She not only uh, disguised herself as a man, she uh, volunteered in an infantry unit that saw combat, and she survived that combat. So uh, that's a really cool story. And if you want to visit Miss Wakeman's grave uh, yourself, she is located in section 52, and her grave marker is 4066.